I want to take Matthew 26, 27, and 28 and, and place it before your minds. And what you have in those three chapters is the betrayal, the sacrifice, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I want to use those areas as a way of introduction into walking with the Word today as we seek to take God's Word and apply it to our lives and, and look at it and learn from it and, and find ways we can better live in this life to, to be better as individuals, to be better as groups of people, to be people who can follow Christ in a deeper and more intimate way. What I'd like us to do for just a few moments is look at love that caused action. And I want us to look at Jesus who went to the cross. And I want us to consider Jesus who rose again. And I want us to consider how that constrains us and that compels us to be people who are caused to move to action. And hopefully as we go through the lesson together today, as we look at the scriptures and as we make a commitment one to another to let the scriptures give us all the answers, to let the scriptures guide us in this life, that we can find areas that all of us, myself and you included, can look at our lives and say, I can do better there. And hopefully we'll find a deeper relationship with, word, with the Word of God, but also a deeper care and concern with Christ and His church. Here's what I want us to do for just a few minutes. I want us to notice that there's love that caused action for us to obey Him, for us to remember Him, for us to preach Him, and then finally, for us to know Him, and to know who He is, and to know what He expects, and to know who we are. Let's start off by talking about obey Him, and let's see 1 John 5, 2 through 3. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep His commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. Now, some of my favorite little passages inside of Scripture are found in short little forms. Of course, right here in 1 John 5, 2 through 3, a, a real simple way. When we love God and when we keep His commandments, that's when we know we love our fellow Christians. You know, when we think about Jesus... We think about Jesus who came to this earth. Uh, we think about Jesus who was born on this earth. We think about Jesus who, who was raised and lived on this earth. And, and we think about Jesus who had a ministry. And we see Jesus over and over and over talking with people, trying to get them to live a better life, to, to live a life that's responsible, to, to live a life that's caring and, and concerned for others. But, but I want you to think about this to live a life that's concerned about the Heavenly Father. And I love 1 John 5, 2 through 3, because we learn that if we, if we love God, and that's keeping His commandments, we, we, we'll love His children. We'll, we'll love our fellow Christians. And, and I love what he says. His commandments are not grievous. You and I need to know that following God is not something that's going to be burdensome. It, it's not going to be something that we can't accomplish. By the way, have you ever heard someone say this? I just can't do it. You and I can never say of the Christian life, we should never say of the Christian life, I can't do it. Because when we look at Scripture, when we see the sacrifice of Jesus, when we see love that caused action, here, here's what I know. I can obey Him. But I love passages like 1 John 5, 2 and 3, even passages like John 14, 15 and John 15, 14 that we've looked at on this program before. If you love me, keep my commandments. You are my friends if you do whatever I say. It is Jesus the one that we must obey and we see that through the cross. We also see that in Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey Him. I want you to see Jesus today as the author, now listen to this, the author of eternal salvation. You know, when we look at Scripture, He's the author. And what we see is He's not just the author. He, he is the one of which we can turn to. He is the one of which we can read about and and you can even turn to various books and read about Him. You can, you can go to the book of Revelation and read about Jesus. You can go to the book of Hebrews and read about Jesus. You can go to the book of Romans and read about Jesus. You can go to the book of John and Matthew and Mark and Luke and, and you can read about Jesus. You can go to the Old Testament and you can read about Jesus. And what you see is someone who cares. And He cared enough to take our place. 
So ladies and gentlemen, may I suggest to you today that we need to see a love. We need to see something that Jesus has done, something so great. And we need to see a love that caused action that turns us to obey Him. Not only that, I want us to see a love that caused action for us to remember Him. We need to remember Jesus. Here is 1 Corinthians 11, 24 through 26. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be a people who remember Jesus Christ. Now, I know 1 Corinthians 11, 24 through 26, and it illustrates to us how we need to remember His sacrifice. We need to remember what He has done. This do in remembrance of me. As you drink it in remembrance of me. I know in that occasion we're talking about the sacrifice that Jesus has given. And, and do you remember Him in that moment? Do you remember Him in Acts 27? And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart into the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. You and I need to understand that inside of Scripture, there are certain things that you and I must do. There are certain things we must follow. And, and one of those things is to remember Him. Now, I know just as much as you do, the period of time where we partake of the Lord's Supper is not the only occasion where we must remember Him such as we read about in 1 Corinthians 11, 24 through 26, where Paul, writing to the Corinthian church, says, this is what Jesus said we must do. I know in Acts 20, verse 7, this is the first day of the week the disciples came together to break bread. I know that talks about that, and I know we should remember Him in that day, but I'm going to give you a counterpart to this. On Monday, do you remember Him? On Tuesday, do you remember Him? On Thursday, do you remember Him? On Friday, do you remember Him? On Saturday, do you remember Him? You may be wondering why I really didn't talk about Sunday or Wednesday. Well, Sunday and Wednesday are usually the days that, that people go to church, per se. That people attend services somewhere, some way, somehow. Do you remember Him when we're not gathered together in services? Now, I, I know we've been talking about the Lord's Supper, and I know that we partake of that on Sundays. But do you remember Jesus Christ when it's not Sunday? When, when we have not assembled, do you remember Him in the regular, everyday parts of life? Is He a part of who you are? And that's why I'm trying to get us to see a love that caused action because, ladies and gentlemen, we need to remember Jesus more. We need to remember Jesus as we see Him in Scripture. We need to see Jesus as He walked by and other people were around Him and, and how He interacted with them because that gives us a great way to interact with our fellow world. We need to see Jesus when He talked with His disciples, when He talked with His friends. And that gives us a scene of how we should talk to His friends. I want you to think about one occasion. I know we're not going to go there in passage, but just think about this. There was an occasion where Jesus ate with Judas. And He told Judas, whatever you do, you do it quickly. Jesus, Jesus knowing that He was going to betray Him, but he still had supper with him. He still loved him. He still cared for him. Boy, isn't that a different way to look at friendship. We need to see Jesus as he interacted with family. We see him interacting with his family. We see him interacting with his mother when he was on the cross, when he told the disciple of whom he loved John to take care of his mother. We need to see Jesus after he came off the cross because he showed himself to his friends and, and all the people that were around and, and he gave them encouragement. We need to see Jesus in prayer. John 17 is a great way to do that. By the way, did you know Jesus prayed for you? Go read John 17. We need to see Jesus and we need to remember Him, not just for His sacrifice, but for His life. You see, Jesus gave a love that caused action and we need to remember Him. We need to obey Him. But not only that, we need to be a people who are willing to preach Him. Listen to this passage. It's Acts 8, 4 through 8. It's where Philip proclaims Christ in Samaria. You have verse 4 down to verse 8, the setting, the preaching, the reaction, the condition, the result. Notice what happens. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. 
Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Listen to the result. And there was great joy in that city. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be a people who speak about Jesus. We need to talk about Jesus as the one that could do anything and that could do everything. And Philip, when he preached, he backed it up with signs and wonders. Now, miracles don't exist today. Signs and wonders do not exist today. But let me tell you what exists today that we can back up with the teaching of Jesus. It's His Word. I, I, I try to talk about studying God's Word, preaching God's Word, standing with God's Word, relying on God's Word as much as I can. Be because when we do that, folks... When we put that into our lives, when we present that, there will be great joy in the city. But I want you to do something a little bit more impactful. What I want you to do for the next six days, I'm going to give you a full seven today and six more. That will bring you back to next Monday. I, I want you to present Jesus to yourself. And, and what I want you to do is I want you to go to the Scriptures and, and I want you to see Him as He lived and and I want you to understand who Jesus is for yourself. And I want there to be great joy within your heart. Because ladies and gentlemen, if we can ever get to a point where Jesus gives us great joy, we won't be able to contain that. We won't be able to stop that. That will be something that will be wrapped up in everything that we do. And that will be love that caused action. You see, we obey Him, we remember Him, we preach Him. Here's the last. Let's be a people who know Him. Who know Him. Him. Listen to 1 John 2, 4 through 6. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. And whosoever keepeth his word and in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so walk, even as he walked. You, you and I need to know who Jesus is. We need to know who he was when he walked on the face of this earth. We need to be people who can say, I know him. I know who he is. I know what he did. And, and I'm going to keep his commandments because in, in 2 John 2, 4, it's in, the, it's in the negative. It talks about a person who, who says, I know him, but doesn't keep his commandments. That person's a liar and the truth's not in him. But the people that keeps his word, those are people that know him, we can know that we're in Him. And listen to what he says at the end. We are people who also so walk even as He walked. You and I cannot know Him until we know what He did. Until we know who He was. Until we know how He lived. I know this sounds kind of rudimentary. I know it sounds kind of simple. But you're never going to advance your knowledge until you get in it. You're never going to know Him in a deeper way until you, you learn Him. You're never going to have a resolve in Him until you see His resolve to the Father. And you're never going to walk in Him until you know how He walked, until you know what He did, until you know how He lived. And ladies and gentlemen, may I suggest to you that we've got to be a people who are not liars. Boy, that's a big deal. People who are not Liars. Doesn't that sound just strange to your ears? You and I would, would, would most likely not intentionally lie. Now, I know that every now and then we say things that we got confused. That's not what I'm talking about. But I, I don't think you and I would intentionally say something knowing it was a lie. We certainly should strive not to do so. We certainly don't like people to do that. But, but listen to this. If we say that we're Christians, if we say we know Him, do we? Do we keep His commandments? Because if we don't, the love of God is not perfected in us. And we're not walking in Him. We're not following after Him. We don't know Him. Matter of fact, this is a passage, 1 John 2, 4 through 6, that is a foundational principle of the reason why we call this program Walking in the Word. We are to walk even as He walked. And that's important and it should be to us. You see, what we've seen today is love that caused action. It causes us to obey Him. 
It causes us to remember Him. It causes us to preach Him. It causes us to know Him. You know what it causes us to do? It causes us to be more like Him. And ladies and gentlemen, when we think about love that caused action, I want us to know Jesus Christ in a deeper way. I want us to see what He did so we can be people who say, I want to be better. And that's really what we're trying to do with our program, Walking with the Word. We're trying to find ways that we can be better, we can take God's Word, we can walk it in our lives, and we can live with Him forever and ever.